Uh, all right. Okay, so first thing I want to just sort of talk about is general guidelines for um, running your own website. First, one thing I always, people always ask me is, what about, you know, you know, other websites? Like you started this website 12 years ago, but everything's so different now. There's just so much competition. There's so much content. There's so many channels. Um, you know, I'm just worried that I, I'm just too late to the game. And I, uh, I don't think you're, anyone's ever too late for, to the game. You know, yeah, being first to something brand new definitely helps. Uh, you know, it definitely helped that I started 12 years ago. Uh, but there are many, many new creators out there uh, that have been around for a year or two years. You know, think of it like the restaurant industry pre-COVID. No, it's not, no one goes to restaurants at the moment, but pre-COVID, you know, we all went out to eat. Uh, there are tons and tons of restaurants. Most of them kind of sucked. Um, but whenever there was a new hot restaurant that was super good, we all wanted to go there. Nobody ever said, I don't want to eat at an awesome restaurant. Uh, no one ever wakes up to say, I don't want to start an awesome restaurant. You know, oh, there's too many good restaurants. Um, I'm, I'm never going to be as good. No. We wake up and we say, I'm going to be better than everybody else. So and don't really worry uh, like about competition because, you know, there's always going to be a new social media channel too, right? I, I mean, when I started, <clears throat> there was only Facebook pages. Now, now we have Pinterest and Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat. And then there used to be Vine and Periscope and YouTube. And, you know, so everything is constantly changing. So don't really worry about that. What is important more important than just being first is a being persistent. Uh, Roman is not built in a day and your website is not going to be your online business. I just say is not going to be built in a day either. It's going to take time. Just keep at it. Most of the people I see that fail uh, tend to fail because they just give up. Uh, but you got to be in this for the long game. Uh, and you constantly need to adapt. You know, but as I said, everything is constantly changing. Um, it, and, you know, just adapt. You know, we, I gave in on ads. We had to adapt. You know, I hate ads. I hate, they suck. But, you know, we have to adapt to the new market and we had to put them in there. We moved to events. You know, you just got to keep adapting. Create quality. As I said, there's a lot of, like, crap out there um most most websites get kind of shitty um you know not just in travel just in general uh, so if you cre create quality you know if you put more time into creating something amazing people are going to react to it because it's kind of rare i mean you know think of all the times you search for content online and you come across for a website you're like this is crap and you go back to google i mean that happens all the time um, you know, build something that solves people's problems. Think of all those Instagrammers out there that are just like, look at me, look at me. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares about you in their day-to-day -day life because we all have our own issues that we're, we're trying to work through, right? You know, internet voyeurism only goes so far. Only a small amount of people are just going to want to look at you living your best life while they're trying to commute to work or they're stuck in their home, uh, you know, dealing, trying to teach their three-year-old math problems, right? You got to build something that solves someone's problems, right? That's what they want. They want to look at you not only for inspiration, but as a resource and an expert that can help solve that problem. For me, that's travel. For you, that can be anything else. That can be like, help me be a better cook or a gardener or whatever it is your niche is. You got to solve someone's problem. Second, uh, and finally, just be community focused. Um, you know, you're not doing this in a bubble. Um, you know, you're doing, people are going to read you because they want to be connected to you. They want, they, they like what you're selling and you're kind of selling yourself and you got a big brand right? People subscribe to, you know, online creatives because they kind of like resonate with them. I like 
the story you're telling. And so just think about everything you do about the people in the community and, you know, the message and brand you want to build around. And you don't have to worry if, you know, people are like, I don't like this because not everyone's going to like what the message, you know, I mean, there's billions of people online can't please everybody, please the people who you want to please. Uh, okay. R read. It's amazing how many people don't read books, not only just in general, but like business books, right? The, the wheel has already been invented. Don't reinvent the wheel, right? You know, learn from top creators and, and, and you know, badass people and, and learn, you know, marketing and all that great stuff. These are my favorite books. Um, some of my favorite books on, on marketing and uh, business and life uh, and writing, um, creativity. Uh, we have more in the course. Um, we'll see, we can send a follow up. Um, but yeah, these are some of the best books I've read on. And I really love what, what got you here won't get you there because it's a whole book on just how you need to like constantly be improving. So. Um, so read books because you can only get so much from a blog post, but a book has all that information. Like someone's already done the hard work for you. Why not take the easy way? Take the shortcut. Uh, think differently, be like Apple, right? One of the ways to stand out in, in the crowded environment, uh, that is the internet now is to do is to make small changes to the you know and present some information in a way that's never been done before if everyone's making uh video right if everyone's writing make video if everyone's being serious be funny if everybody you know is you know taking um you know really photoshop pictures just be your natural self people want authenticity if everyone's do basically do the opposite of what everyone's doing uh, because then you stand out that then everyone goes oh this person's doing things a little differently I, like because you notice things that are different um and that's going to just help you stand out a little more uh invest in yourself and in your business um I know it's hard when you start out and you're not really making any money um, to invest in yourself or your business, right? But you know that investment comes in many ways. That comes in in learning, um, you know, reading books. That I mean, there's so many online classes now that are pretty inexpensive. Masterclass, Skillshare, Teachable, Udemy. We have our own courses. What I can send you later. Um, on blogging and business, you can go to conferences, read, uh, you know, invest in yourself uh, and invest in your business. You know, you can find some great um, <clears throat> designers and virtual assistants and, and, you know, and helpers on sites like Upwork and 99designs. <clears throat> and it can be pretty cheap. You know, I mean, I, I mean, sometimes you get what you pay for, but when you're just starting out, you know, it doesn't have to be great it just has to be good right i mean uh you know i think somewhere if you google uh okay hold on i'm gonna let's see i want to see if i can find this for you guys Here we go. You see this thing here? Don't stop. Let's uh, get out of this image here. You see this image on the left? Like that was one of my images for nine years ago for my uh, book, right? Not a great image. Uh, I'll tell you that. Um, but you know, the point is that you, know, you really want to free up your time. You know, you can't do everything. So when you invest in yourself and you outsource work, you really free up your time and it doesn't have to be great right away. You know, you'll get, 
the more money you make, the, the better you know, quality people you can hire, uh, but you really want to free up your time. And when you invest in yourself and when you invest in your, you know, your brand and your website, people really see that. And they say to themselves, you know, this person's really you know, investing and in making things better. I want to invest in them too. Because every day people are making decisions. So if we come to your website and it looks crappy and there's lots of typos and it doesn't really look like you're, you're making an effort, um, then people are going to move away. And be niche. 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 Uh, <clears throat> you don't have to be everything to everyone. Um, you know, if there's billions of people out there on the internet. You don't need billions of followers. You just need the right followers, right? <clears throat> if you just want to focus on fly fishing in Alaska, there's tens of thousands of people that want to do fly fishing in Alaska. You just need to reach them. If you are like obsessed with ramen noodles and all you want to do is blog about ramen noodles, there's going to be so many people online who just love ramen noodles as much as you do and are going to want to just know all the best places to eat it and just want to talk about ramen noodles. Um, you know, so don't try to be everything to everyone. Be narrow, right? In this day and age when there's just so much content out there, it's very hard to just be another travel blog, you know, another blog about backpacking. Try to narrow things down as much as possible and then use that technique of like presenting the information in a different way to sort of make yourself stand out you know if you're going to be a backpacker you know and you want to talk about backpacking figure out like what is it that you can bring and present in a unique way that no one else has because again everybody's story is different your perspective is different from my perspective so already you're creating a unique angle because you are talking from your perspective and that's automatically unique so it's so you know drill down a little more and see like how you can really define who you are and what your audience wants to be and then think long term Rome wasn't built in a day and your website uh, won't either um, you know the people I see leave but they just it's always darkest before the dawn and they just leave right before things get like great. Um, stick it out. You know, you got to be willing to do this for at least a year making no money. If you don't want to make that time commitment, uh, it probably isn't for, for you, but stick it out. You know, a lot of being successful online is just really just outlasting everybody else. The people who don't want to make the commitment and just give up and then you're still standing. Um, all right, let's talk social media. Um, some universal tips, uh, don't obsess about the numbers. Um, you know, there's so much, you know, be prepared for so glow, slow growth. Um, there's so much content these days, unless you're really like first on a platform, you know, some brand new platform and you're there before everybody else. Uh, it's going to take a long time, you know, going back to what I said about um, Rome not being built in a day, you know, it, it's, it can be discouraging to, you know, not see your numbers just go up like a rocket ship, but it's going to be like a, a ladder. You're going to go up, you're going to flat, go flat, you're going to go up, you're going to go flat. That's how it, um, how it really goes. It's going to be slow, but don't obsess about those numbers because you don't, it's not about the number of people you have. It's about the quality of the people you have. And if you have a really engaged audience, <clears throat> that's what you want. It doesn't matter if you have a million people, but nobody reads it, right? You want the people that are engaged with your content in your community. <clears throat> um, don't uh, put all your eggs in one basket. Um, you know, then you're really, like, you know, and that means Google too, because if you focus on one thing, you're, you know, and they change their algorithm, you're screwed. 
right? So you don't want to just be all in on Instagram, right? And then Instagram changes their algorithm. You're like, um, I'm complaining and this sucks and what am I going to do? You know, I mean, Instagram is going to think of Instagram at first. They don't really care about, you know, how their algorithm affects one creator. They care about how it makes Instagram more profitable. So don't put all your eggs in one basket because then it doesn't really matter as much. You know, you could, you know, if one um, <clears throat> platform isn't doing so well, you can shift. And so you want to be as many places as possible. You know, you really just want to focus on the platforms that are best suited for you. I like words. I hate video. So Facebook and Twitter are really where I love um, the most. And you're never going to see me on TikTok. Um, you're never going to see me on YouTube. I just don't like video. Uh, I'm not a fan. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I, re I rarely post video. Um, I just don't like it. I like words. I feel awkward on video. So find the platform that you know doesn't make you feel awkward. Um, Scheduling apps like Sprout Social, Tailwind, Later, um, there's a, many out there, will save you time. Sit down once, schedule it all out, and be done with it and move on with your life. Because that way, you can just you really batch work. Back, batching work is really important. And, um, we'll talk about that at the end. Uh, but yeah, use scheduling apps so you don't have to like every day wake up and like do things in real time. Just one and done. Um, let's talk about how to get followers. As I said, it's going to be slow growth because um, there's so much content out there these days. But, you know, this isn't like Ke Kevin Costner's Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will not come. You must go out and get followers. So always network with other creators. Pitch tons of guest posts. Go on every podcast, do everything you can uh, to be everywhere. Follow people on every channel and, and talk to them and just, you know, networking is about building relationships, not just like transactional relationships, but real deep relationships. Um, and when you do that, people will share your content and that makes it easier to grow. One thing I really like doing is hosting Instagram lives with other creators because their followers will start to follow you or, and, and vice versa. So everyone gets something from it. That can be a really good way to sort of grow your Instagram. Um, every time we do an Instagram live, we have a, a little bump in, in uh, followers. So if you did a lot of them, you could really grow your, your follower account really uh, quickly. Um, Comment on other blogs and on social media. This is less about getting the creator themselves to follow you, but also bringing you just building awareness to your brand and that you exist. You know, you kind of kind of it's sort of like knocking on every door and saying like, "Hey, our store is open. Come visit sometime," um, and just doing that consistently so people are like, "Okay, I recognize this name and this URL and this blog." I've seen it around enough. I'm going to finally check them out. Although you can't do it right now, you know, attend conferences and meetups because the connections you build in real life are, are so much more important and so much, so much deeper than um, what you build online. And, and when you have, when you put a face to the name, uh, it's much easier to sort of get, um, at like on other people's websites so um always attend pe things in real life and, and join facebook groups um there's a ton out there you know um there's just so many and that can be really helpful too and you know if for any of you in our courses um and if not you can join our course you know you um you have access to a whole group of people who will do link swaps and, and guest posts and, and Instagram lives with you. So you already have that built in community. Because once you build that community, it's a lot easier to, to keep going up that ladder. Things not to do. 
Um, pods are those things where like everyone in the pod, like for this for Instagram, um, where everyone is like, okay, we're gonna all gonna like your photo. It's sort of like faking engagement. Uh, don't do that. You want don't buy followers. You know, don't, you want real quality people because again, it's not about the number of people. It's about the engagement and and the quality of people. I mean, I know people who who buy followers and you know, um, their engagement sucks. You know, and 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 brands know these are all fake followers. Real people are the best people. <clears throat> Don't forget to interact with your followers. You know, every couple of days. Uh, you know, it's easier when you're um, newer. But like for me, you know, we have a lot of people. I get we get a lot of comments. Like every couple of days, I spend an hour and I just um, sit down and I answer everyone's questions. Uh, and I go through everything um, that so um, oh I meant to tell people today see I always forget about this stuff <laughs> and Richard needs to remind me I forgot to text people about this talk um, but um, you know interact with people so like sit down and answer people's comments you know if this isn't a microphone right this isn't a one-way conversation it's a discussion so be sure to you know interact with people, and again, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And then you know what you can really do to sort of turbocharge your growth is to get attention media platforms, right? Follow journalists on Twitter. I you know I follow a ton of journalists, and they're always like tweeting, "Hey, you know, if you know anybody who you know is you know work from home with kids, like I'm I'm writing a story." please send them my way journalists go on twitter to ask for you know experts and people they can feature in their articles it's an easy way for them to get reputable sources you used to do it um that's how i got my first feature in the new york times at the time that the writer matt gross on the frugal traveler was like you know this is back in like 2009 uh where's just like Hey, travel bloggers, this is kind of new and I'm gonna write about it. Is anyone making any money? And I was like, oh, I'd make some. Um, <clears throat> and did a whole interview with me about it. And that like, I mean, that put me on the map. So follow people on Twitter, Twitter, because I still see requests all the time. You can also sign up for Help a Reporter Out. Um, this is a three times a day email from bloggers, journalists, uh, websites, you know, asking for at experts on a variety of subjects, you know, for a variety of articles. And, you know, you'll see the ask, the email, and you just reply and say, hey, I think I can help. And it works. I mean, a lot of our students uh, talk about how they get featured in the hair all, all the time. Um, guest posts on other websites, inside and outside of your niche. Don't just stick to travel. Be somebody else's expert. You know, go to a finance website. You know, there's like a Venn diagram of of overlap between sites, and you want to be in that center, right? I, I may talk about travel, but I talk about budget travel, and that's about saving money. So, people who run finance blogs tend to talk about saving money. People who like to save money also like to save money on travel. So, I go on a bunch of websites about you know saving money online talking about uh this this information uh telling people how to save money on travel and i become that you know and i open myself up to a whole new audience you know and, and that can really help a lot uh and say yes to every interview uh you never know who's going to see anything so i always say yes to everything um uh, so um Always say yes to every interview. One second, I gotta get some water. All right, <clears throat> so to recap, we got some general strategies on, you know, just <clears throat> mindset. We talked about how to grow your social media. You got all these followers, what are you gonna do with them? You gotta get them on the newsletter. It's the most important thing you can do. Why? Because <clears throat> you control that newsletter um 
that list is yours. Those followers are yours. It doesn't matter what Facebook al Facebook's algorithm does. It doesn't matter uh, what YouTube or Instagram does. You know, who cares if they go away? You own this list. It is yours. You can take it wherever you want. Email is king. You own that list. Social Instagram, tomorrow you can ban your account, you're gonna lose all those followers. Can never happen with email. You own that list. Uh, people don't miss an email. And people might not respond to your email, but they don't miss it. But you know, if you're off Twitter for an hour, <clears throat> you're gonna miss tons of stuff. And then same with Instagram, right? Because what's gonna happen is, um, you know, like I just logged on to Instagram and I'm getting like, everything's out of order. You know, the top photos from an hour ago, then the next one's from 26 minutes ago. And then Instagram will like be like, here are the accounts you interact with the least. And it's like, yeah, because you never show me photos, right? So with email, you can't miss any of that. And it requires active participation. You know, it's easy to like something on the way home, um, you know, while you're going home from work, but email, I had to sign up for it. I had to double opt in. I had to do a ton of stuff. And, um, you know, it, it requires active participation. It allows you to connect with people on a more personal level because you're exchanging emails. Um, so definitely want to do that. Uh, and it makes it just easier to sell stuff uh, because um, you know, you're in someone's inbox. So if you have a product, uh, you know, an event like this, it's a captive audience and people, you know, cut because they've already said, yes, I want more information from you. They're more likely to say, well, I might want that product from you because you are so good at solving my problems. Like we talked about in the beginning, this could be the product that solves my problems. And, and it's just, it's hard to do that on, um, social media. Email is the best. <clears throat> Some email marketing tips. Um, always include an opt-in on every page uh, and post you have. Um, you know, you want to give people as many chances as possible to sign up for your link. We have one on the sidebar, we have a pop-up, we have two at the bottom of the page. We have one at the top of the page. I mean, it's everywhere. You always want people to be able to sign up, right? Uh, to make it clear exactly what they're signing up for, right? I mean, what, what are they trying to do? Um, you know, what, you know, what are you going to sell, give them? So, you know, we say in our opt-ins, like sign up and get a free starter kit of like, uh, checklists as well as weekly travel ticks, tips. You know, so they know they're going to get free downloads and once a week they're going to get an email. Enticing people with free downloads works too. Because uh, everyone is like, okay, cool, I get something. You know, it doesn't have to be great. I mean, we're not like <clears throat> giving people like 500 page books or anything like that, but just a free guide you know, on starting a website or travel hacking or, you know, like a packing checklist that entices people to sign up. People want that kind of stuff. They want those, those, you know, leads. These are called lead, gen, mag, lead magnets. They want that because the lead is attracted to, to that magnet. Uh, use pop-ups. I know they suck, but they work. They convert the best out of anything. Use it. Each email should have a call to action. You can see it on the side, right? Right, this email over here on the side, you know, it's about um, how we created our, how we changed our guides to include maps. So it's all about that one thing. And then the call to action is uh, buy that guide. There's not a bunch of other stuff going on. It's just, they can do one thing. One email should have a singular focus. One email, one focus. It's like a story, right? You know, you read a story, it has one point to it. Same with an email, one point, you know. <clears throat> um, don't email people too often unless they know ahead of time. 
So like you can tell people like, I'm going to send you a free series of emails over the next week to talk about uh, blogging, right? So I now know that you're going to send me a bunch of emails over the course of the week. But if I don't know that ahead of time, I'm going to get really annoyed when um, you send me a bunch of emails. We all get super annoyed. Nobody wants emails every day unless we ask for it, right? So once a week, max, unless otherwise specified. I'm be honest and, and authentic. You know, people are signing up because they want more of you. Just be you. That's what you should always do. Just be you. But more so in the email. Nobody wants marketing emails. If people want marketing emails, they'll sign up for the gap. Um, people are signing up for your emails because they are super interested in you, the person, and that's what they want. <clears throat> All right. Oh, we're almost done. This is the last slide. Bonus tip, time management. How do you find the time to do all this? Scheduling. Let me go back to, to things. Hold on. You guys can see all my, all my stuff. Luckily, it's, it's all... Oh, let's see. All right, here's my schedule for the week. Um, I schedule everything. You guys can see this? I hope so. Um, I mean, I even schedule in, like, my errands and when I'm going to hang out with people. Um, why? Because by creating a week-long schedule, I know exactly what to do when I'm going to do it. Right? There's no surprises. I don't when you create a long to-do list, you, you look at that list and go, oh shit, I got a lot to do. So you do the easy, quick ones first, and then all that's left is the long ones. And then you're like, oh God, you become less motivated. But by batching your work and creating a schedule, you only have to focus on today's thing. You don't have to worry about what happens tomorrow, you know, or, in, you know, or the next day. You just have to worry about what happens today. So at the beginning of every week, usually Sunday night, I sit down, I write down everything I have to do, and then I create my week, uh, week schedule. And then I don't think about it for the rest of the week because I don't have to worry about changing plans or uh, what's coming up. I've already mapped it out. I know exactly what I need to focus on today and, and nothing more. You really want to focus on scheduling and, and batching your work. Create that calendar so there's no surprises. Right, but once you do that, you really find you have a lot of time because <clears throat> you're not stressed about anything else that's coming ahead. All you have to do is focus on that one thing at that on today, and that's it. <clears throat> and that makes it a lot easier to um, to get work done because you you're not looking at a long to do list. You're just looking at what are Wednesday's tasks? What are the three, four things I have to do today to say today is a success? And once you do that, you start breaking things down into smaller bunches. It becomes a lot more manageable. Uh, it becomes, the more you cross things off, the more motivated you become. And so then you're like, okay, I can do this. You don't start to lose motivation <clears throat> and you don't start feeling like you're not making any progress because you can see the progress you're making. And so, boom, here we go. Thank you for attending. So, and uh, with that, I will stop share. Hello, here we are. <laughs> I moved. You did, I didn't even see you move. <laughs> I know, because I had my screen share going. Oh, sneaky. Well, thank you so much, Matt. The chat is filled with tons of great info and Erica is out here supplementing your info so she got a lot of the questions answered while you were speaking so there's a lot of um, information in that but we still had a lot of great questions which is which is awesome everyone keeping engaged um, I know Moshi asked if books are better than online reading but I would you know assume that you think every all reading is great <laughs> All reading is great, but books are the best. 
There we go. There we have it. <laughs> um, and Dana had a question if the algorithm cared if you scheduled items versus doing it in real time. Um, nope, it does not. The, um, the algorithm doesn't care about that at all. It cares about engagement. If content is because the more engagement your content creates, the more time on that site you are, the more ads get served up. That's what, that's what they care. That's really good to know. I, I would have assumed that it would be better in real time, but that's good to know. And Casey had asked if you need to have a certain number of followers to pitch to other creators. Uh, when you're pitching to other creators, try to pitch within sort of your like your level, right? So you know, if you have a hundred followers, try to pitch people you know in that less than five hundred range, and then keep moving up like a ladder. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't pitch somebody with two thousand followers, and you're not going to get a yes. Uh, but it's more likely to get a yes when you're sort of in that same range. Uh, you know, if you have 500 followers and you pitch, you know, Oprah, right? Oprah, you know, it's not good. It's not really going to work out. Then again, no one's at Oprah's level. So like, you know, if, if you're just going to pitch someone with, you know, 200,000 people, they're, you, you're not going to bring like the max followers you're going to bring to them is a hundred. Right. So, um, so you try to pitch people within that range. And then as you move up, you know, you all move up together. And so you kind of grow and, it, it's great right that makes that makes sense um okay so rose jumping back on scheduling posts she wanted to know if you think it matters to post at a specific scheduled time or just whenever the content is ready because i know there's better times of the day better days of the week usually that may people are more engaged or online more so what are your thoughts on that <clears throat> whatever you decide just be consistent Right, so if you always post content on Monday mornings, just always post on Monday mornings. You know, we have, we do Mondays and Thursdays, um, and that's where we're just really consistent on that. You know, it's just about being consistent. Um, is there a, a better time? You know, you know, that depends on the platform. Like more people are on Facebook at night and before work, people are on Instagram mm -hmm. around lunchtime and on their commute back. Um, so it really varies, right? Um, people will search more, you know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then they do Friday, Saturday because they tend to be out. And so, uh, but when it comes to like posts and content, you know, just if you settle on something, just stick with it. All right. Yep. And uh, Rose has another question about how often do you reach out for guest posts when you're starting out? Um, I know Erica put in a little bit of her input, but I'd love to hear what you have to say about that as well. I would always reach out. Never stop reaching out for guest posts. We always reach out. I mean, I do it in batches. Um, usually, nowadays, it's usually around like a product or something. Like we did a big, a bunch of stuff last summer um, around the last book, but always reach out. Always say yes. Always say yes. I love that. Okay. Um, hmm, lots of great questions in here. So Erica said, you know, she's asking, given the COVID situation, is this the best time to create and post lots of content or better to create content, but wait to post until the audience feels more optimistic about being able to travel? I know there's a lot of thoughts around that. Um, Everyone's always looking for, we're all trapped in our homes, right? So, um, you know, we are all looking for that inspiration. You can still post stories um, and you can still write tips. We're still publishing tips for later because you also just want them to get like, you know, indexed by Google too, right? But if you're posting like, here's 10 tips to go to Florida right now, obviously that's, that's not a good idea, right? Uh, but if you're talking about a story, you know, we all buy books, we all read stories, like that doesn't change. So you can still post a story that happened to you, you know, a long time ago, people are still engaging with stories, um, you know, and tips and people are starting to think about tips, you know, you can talk about, 
future tips or how COVID has changed your, your industry uh, and what to expect in the future. Um, so I, I, it's just around the messaging. If you're recommending people to travel now, that's, well, you know, read the room. Um, but if, if you're telling people like, here's some advice for later in the year, you know, when things might get better, okay, that's fine. Right. All right. Um, tra uh, Krista wants to know what platform you use to send out your newsletters and emails. Uh, we use one called Active Campaign. It's like, it's more of like a content management system because we have so much going on. Um, I recommend ConvertKit. I think they're the best company for bloggers um, because they're, they're made for like small mid-tier content creators. It's, it's just robust enough. Um, so I would highly recommend them. The team behind it is awesome too. Um, we use them up, up until last year that when, once we started doing events, we needed, we just had too many things going on that it just got too complicated. So okay. we have like a, a CMS system. Okay. And ConvertKit, you're running your social media through as well? Or is no, it just? ConvertKit is just email. Just email. Okay. Yeah, we still run all our travel con email through there. But for Nomadic Bat, we needed oh. something that was more like corporate. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, talking about corporations company, Tracy wanted to know as a one person blog, what business structure did you opt for? Um, she's thinking about creating an LLC this time around, but what are your thoughts? Um, I am in what's called an S corp, um, because I have employees like Erica. And so we run payroll, um, and it just saves a bunch of on taxes. If you're your own person, uh, an LLC is probably the best. I, I, I didn't incorporate myself probably into like six or seven years into the, into the process and when we started, like, when I started making like a full-time salary from the website and had to start worrying actually, and started actually worrying about taxes. <laughs> right. Good to know. Moshi has another question about um, which social media platform is better to invest in at the beginning versus when your blog is more established or if there is a difference or does it matter if you switch halfway through? Um, I, there's no like one social media platform. Um, you, you invest in the one that you're most excited about. You know, I mean, people love Instagram. I'm, I hate Instagram. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm always on Twitter. I live on Twitter, right? But so it, it really depends on your audience. Right. And I heard it. I, I mean, I never go on TikTok. I have one TikTok video. That's, that's all I'll ever have. Well, I'm going to go find you now, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> what, if you, what if you hate social media altogether? Live your, love your life with Misty. <laughs> um, uh, I got no good answer. You just got to tough through it. I have to tough through it on Instagram all the time. You just got to got to tough through it. Now, <laughs> if you were to say have like a destination website, right? Let's say it's all about Philadelphia, right? You're going to get most of your traffic there through search. So you don't have to be on Instagram as or social media as much because the people that are coming for through your website are probably Googling information about what to do and what to see and how to visit Philadelphia. They're, they're not going to just be like following an account on Philly and some will. Right. And so you do want to create those, be on social media, but you don't have to be as active as if you were just a solo creator. Yep. That makes sense. All right, Robert uh, just chimed in. I saw in March that you said that 30% of the travel, 30 to 40% of the travel bloggers might disappear. Do you have any new thoughts now that it's July? Uh, no, I still think that many will eventually go away, especially now that borders are still closed and uh, you know things haven't really gotten better. I think you'll see a lot of people who have not planned for the future and start to 
to have to look for an exit. Yep. Yep. But you know, crisis is opportunity, right? So the people who are, you know, coming, you know, inventing in this new age and have plans for the future and are pivoting, they will survive. Mm -hmm. You know, there's yeah, always a, rea a shift, a realignment when you have these kind of, you know, major shifts in, you know, business and culture, right? Right. You know, some people survive, new people come up and, you know, those that don't adapt die. Right. Yeah, I've seen a lot of um, travel bloggers kind of pivot, <clears throat> just traveling their own backyards, traveling their home countries, their own states and whatnot. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot suddenly become food bloggers. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, and it really depends. Yeah, well, food is a massive part of traveling, so that kind yeah. of is a, it's a big segue. Van life, too. Yep, lots of van. Yeah. Folks now. <laughs> lots. Um, Laura wants to know if you recommend posting the same content on Instagram and Facebook or varying it. Same post, uh, uh, she means same post at the same time on each platform. Uh, we always share our pictures to Facebook, but you know, Instagram is about photography. Facebook is like sharing links and status updates and, um, and some pictures. So there is some overlap between content platforms, but it's not like a super huge um, overlap, right? So like, you know, I can just post on Instagram, hey, I sh here's a link, right? I mean, you can do that in your story, but in your feed is just going to be photos. Mm -hmm. and whereas Facebook, it can be a lot more variety. Absolutely. And then if you're posting on Twitter, you have to really cut things down or be able to link it out. So a lot of times it's, it's um, better to vary the information depending on the platform. You have to shorten things for Twitter. And then, you know, TikTok's all video, all video, <laughs> no room for text. So. Tracy would love to know how much content do you recommend having upon launching your site? She's heard various um, estimates from 10 to 100 articles, posts, etc. Um, I think if you're just launching, having five to 10 is a, is a good amount of, because like you want to give people enough inf content to get a sense of who you are and why they should come back, you know, beforehand, you know, in, in, in the yesteryears of 2008 to 2012, you can just start with one blog post and be like, here I am and just go. But nowadays the way people consume content, <clears throat> it's very unlikely people are just gonna find you. Um, you know, so having, you know, if they do find you, they don't, no one's gonna know you're just new because ever, there's just so many blogs out there now. It's, it's a large community. So I would uh, have five to 10. Five to 10, five to 10, that's a good number to launch with. And Casey heard a contra controversial comment. A friend once recommended that instead of a blog, that they should just post it all on Instagram. And Casey personally doesn't think that would work in theory, but have you seen anything like that? And what are your thoughts on that? Um, again, this goes back to what I said about uh, not putting all your eggs in one basket. Right. Right. So, you know, if you only have Instagram and Instagram goes away, you have nothing. So always have more than one thing because you could be crushing it on just Instagram and then Instagram changes their algorithm and now you're not being seen. Um, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. Right. That makes sense. And now that Facebook owns Instagram, if Facebook goes down, Instagram might as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, what Mark Zuckerberg wants for Facebook, he gets for Instagram too, so. <laughs> yep. So, it, so now that's to your point, if you're only on those two platforms and those go down, it's like, where else, what else do you have? So. All right, I think we've uh, covered most of the questions in the chat. If anyone else um, has any questions, I think you can just reach out to 
Erica at the Nomadic Network and Matt as well. Right, and uh, a couple of things. Here's a link um, in the chat. I think Erica has your email. She can send it as a follow-up, but you know, that's our blogging courses. Um, so if you want to, um, you know, join our courses, um, we have a blogging course and we have a writing course. Um, here again is link. And if you use the code 50 off, you can get 50% off your uh, first three months as a membership. Um, it's not really a course. It's sort of a mentorship. Uh, I shouldn't have said course. It's more of a mentorship. Every month, um, you know, you get writing calls. You know, I edit your work. We go over strategy. It's really, really a partnership uh, over that. So if that's interesting, come on, come one off. If not, no worries either way. Um, and then any